Hello, everyone, and welcome to Real Heaven Encounters. I'm your host tonight, Evangelist Ivan Tuttle. I'm so glad you could join us here. And listen, tonight, I'm going to get into some things that are pretty heavy. and But it's going to start explaining why some of the things that are happening today are happening. There's been some magic tragedies happened in our country recently. And I'm going to explain why these things are happening. And so hopefully we can get to the bottom of it. All right? Let's open in prayer. Heavenly Father, we invite you here in the studio. We invite you into the homes. Holy Spirit, come. Come, Holy Spirit, into the homes and into the studio. In Jesus' name, amen. And bless the word. Amen. All right. I'm going to start talking tonight about some things. Listen, a horrible, horrible tragedy. These people being shot and killed during this gaming that the thing that they had going on down there in in uh, Florida, in Jacksonville. That, that's that just breaks my heart when I see something like that because it's preventable and it's very preventable. And I'm going to explain to you why and, and why I'm talking about these things right now, like I am. So, anyways, I'm Evangelist Ivan Tuttle. I explained that a minute ago, and I wrote a book called Entrapment. Uh, if you go visit our website, our website is www.realheavenencounters.org. That's www.realheavenencounters.org. Go visit our website, take a look around. You'll see all the videos we've done. If you're interested in the book, you can get that there on the website too. But the main thing is visit our website. There's a lot of things in there that we're not talking about tonight. All right. And you can look at any of the videos we've done before right there. All right. Now. Let's look at what's happening in our world. Let's look at the school shootings that happened. Let's look at what happened again down there in Jacksonville, which wasn't a school shooting, but it was similar in, in the respect of the people who were there doing the same type of things. Here's what I'm going to explain to people. And this is going to be a tough one. There's going to be some people out there that are going to rebuff this. There's people that are going to try to say whatever they want and they might not agree with it, but I'm telling you that when God shows you something and it's for, from God, I don't care who says anything opposite from it. If it's from God, it's from God, and I'm going to be speaking about what's from God. All right? This is what happened. In 1978, when I died and I was dead for over an hour, I, I went to hell. I went to heaven. And then I came back. And while I was in hell, there were things that I saw happening there. You just wouldn't believe it. And it, it, I mean, they're planning, there's strategy being planned in hell for things that are going to happen in the future. Believe me, they've been around thousands of years. They can see the progression. They can make great guesses. They have a good idea about what's going to happen next. And because of that, they're planning and plotting things ahead of time. They are. And when I was in heaven, the angel in heaven said, look, I want you to see this. I want you to see what the demons have been doing. You saw it, but let me explain it to you. And so this angel was explaining some of the things to me. And I didn't write everything in my book. I can't write everything, but this I did write. Some of this I wrote about. And, and I'm going to get into reading that in just a few moments because it's important. But here's what's going on. These games that are out there today, people get so caught up in them, they don't have a life. I mean it. I've seen it. I've seen it firsthand. I've known people that have been so caught up in it that even on their payday, all their money went to paying for the games that they already got out. They didn't get a paycheck. They, they, they couldn't because they had dug themselves so deep in a hole buying games and buying different things that you had to get for these videos it, it caused them great pain and great sorrow and caused them a lot of financial problems. That's part of the problem. Then the other problem is, is that you get kids, what's the first thing parents are doing today? A child gets old enough where they can hold something in their hand, they give them their cell phone. And they start putting games up on there and they're showing them games and having the kids look at the games and all these things. And so kids are looking at games and playing games before they can talk or do anything else. Parents, the first communication your children should have is with you or with your family. That's who children should have communication with, not with a game. 
Find other things to entertain them. Keep those games away from them. And I'm going to get into detail why I say that, why I think it's important. It's important to do that. You see, we're raising up, and I'm going to be real blunt here, we're raising up a group of people that can't think on their own. We're raising up a group of people that have absolutely no imagination because they don't need one. With all the gaming and everything that's out there, they don't even need an imagination. They've got imagination right there. You know, they live in these virtual reality worlds and everything else. There's people that live in those in their mind all the time. And I've said it a long time ago, and I'll say it a couple of times today. What you feed grows, what you starve dies. And if that's what you're feeding your mind, that's what grows in your mind. If you starve your mind of that, then it dies. And it's a fact. Here's what's happened. You can look at violence in America and how it has been rising ever so slightly, little by little, way back in the 80s, then in the 90s, then in the 2000s, you start seeing it, it's rising, and it's a different kind of violence. You can see the school violence that's happened. And you can watch it, and I'm gonna tell you right now, it's directly attributed to the gaming. I know, I'm gonna to prove to you that it is. Here's what I did. I saw this happening before they even came out with games. I think they had something called Pong. I don't know if anybody remember Pong, anybody old enough out there? Don't raise your hands, folks. I can't see you anyways. <laughs> but they had, I can see the audience here. But in Pong, you know, it's that little game where you just hit that little thing, it's like tennis, you know. Pong, beep, 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 and that's what it did. And you're hitting this little tennis ball that's going back and forth and back and forth and that's what reminded me of tennis and a little tennis ball. And that could get nerve wracking in itself. Here's what we don't need. We don't need things that become extremely nerve wracking. We need things that are more calm today than we do that because that takes a whole lot out of you. You wonder why children, they say children have autism. A lot of those kids that they're claiming have autism, they're just wired up funny because the parents handed them a cell phone when they were a little baby and they started playing the games, and they started getting involved in those kind of things, and their brain couldn't function properly. The brain didn't learn how to work properly. I, I'm speaking things out. God has shown me these things to speak about it, so I am. Not all autism is like that, but a lot of children, they were given these games, they were stuck in front of the TV set with video games, and they play them, and yeah, you're sitting there going, oh, but they're innocent video games. No, they're not. If they're, if they're grasping their attention and their whole attention is in that is not innocent. All right, let me just go through. I think it's important to do this. Here's what I saw when I was in hell and the angel let me see this very clearly when I was in heaven. And this is, this is reading out of my book. People do not realize that many things on earth have demonic beginnings like stories about vampires or werewolves or white magic, witches, trolls, ogres, even the movies where they're supposed to be good witches and warlocks that fight evil, you know, uh, come from a demonic background, as well as those things that you would you know, like video games where you battle evil forces and the like. They all have a demonic presence in them. I don't understand why people are so blind to this today. But that too is a trick of the devil. There is no doubt in my mind that there are some people that get this far in my book. Now remember, I'm quoting out of my book. will get this far in my book and will stop reading it because it'll offend them. And they'll think I'm crazy. And that's what the devil would want. So he can continue to deceive and control people. Parents wake up. This happened to me back in 1978. And I was able to see these types of games before they were ever even invented or released. There is no time after you die. It is forever. And you are leading your children straight to hell by letting them play these games. I, you know, just look back at the kids from the 60s and the 70s, and then look at the kids in the 80s and 90s, and you can see a difference. Now look at the kids today. There's very little communication with them. They're always playing these games and ignoring their parents. Listen, you go to church, 
Your children do too. But, and they seem like the good kids, but there's a deep, dark side that you do not know about your own children when you allow them access to these things. I understand your kids keep telling you that everyone else does it, and so-and-so allows their kids to do it, but that doesn't make it right. Even if the pastor's kids at your church are allowed to play the games or watch those movies, it's still opening up a doorway for demonic powers to enter your home and your children. Now, I wrote this in 2013 before we were really having a lot of these problems. But here's, what, here's what's going on. Look at the school shootings that are happening. A lot of these people have ties to video games. Not just evil ones, but sometimes they're the ones, a lot of the teenagers are into the violent ones where they're shooting and they're killing each other and they're doing things and they have to fight off evil forces and uh, um, some other country or whatever and they're fighting them and they're killing people all the time. Listen, that's the same type of training and the same things that you get when you go into the service to understand how to do certain things in the service. That's the exact same type of gaming that they use for that to train somebody to have to kill somebody in the line of duty in the service when they're serving in the military. And you're allowing children. Now, children's brains, understand this. When you're a teenager, a young teenager, your brain is not developed yet. It's still growing. They've even proven that if you give young people, you know, like there's a lot of 14-year-olds and 12-year-olds even now, that are smoking pot. And because they're smoking pot, their brain does not develop properly as they get older. Once you're about 21, you're, that, all those parts and communications of the brain that develop your personality and things, it's pretty much set by the time you're 21. But when you're 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 years old, even 17, 18, it's still developing. And when you allow kids to put junk in their brains that haven't fully developed yet, junk comes out of it. I'll repeat that. If you allow the, your children to keep putting junk in their brain, then that's what's going to come out of it. What you feed grows, what you starve dies. If you keep feeding this junk into your brain, that's what grows in your brain. That's what you think about. Now, I, I'm going to give you a completely different extreme. For the last five years now in particular, I don't allow certain music in my home. I'm not talking about bad music. I don't allow any kind of music in my home except for Christian music. That's all we listen to. I don't watch normal TV, as most people would call it. Uh, I watch nature shows and some of those things, and uh, I, I watch things that are real life that are happening, but I don't get involved in all that other stuff. I couldn't tell you who's the best actor or actress today. I couldn't tell you any of that stuff. Because see, I've separated myself from the rest of the world on purpose. My whole family has. Willingly have done it. I haven't said, no, you all have to do this too. It's a willingly, it's something that we willingly have done. And we've done this because we want to draw closer to God. You see, what you feed grows, what you starve dies. And we keep feeding our minds things of God. We read the Bible. We, you know, we, we listen to worship music. Sometimes we sing the worship music. You know, whatever. We're spending time with the Lord in prayer. We're doing things. And our house is filled with the presence of God. Now, to me, that's a very important thing because if I allowed my mind to drift off and get into other things, I wouldn't have the clarity or the sensitivity to the Spirit like I do, the Holy Spirit. Now, when you get involved in gaming and you get involved in those things, you now have become sensitive to the wrong spirit. You become sensitized and sensitive to those things in the gaming industry. And that's what happens. I don't care if it's Candy Crush, all right? If you're sitting there playing that thing all day, you're addicted. If you're constantly, oh, I gotta do it, I gotta do it, I gotta do it, I gotta get in there and do it. You know? It's like gambling. It's, it's just like gambling. People get in there and they wanna gamble and they'll, they'll gamble and they'll, oh, I gotta, I'm gonna win, I'm gonna win, I'm gonna win. It's that, it's that drive that comes inside of you because you're feeding your mind all of that junk. And as you feed your mind that junk, it grows inside of you. 
And I'll, I'll guarantee you, if you take some children from other parts of the world that don't have the, the access to those video games, I mean good ones and bad ones alike, and don't have access to sitting there melting away in front of their cell phone all the time, and you put them down with somebody else that's their same age, let's say two 15-year-olds, and you set them in a the room together, and you ask them to figure something out, the one that's in the video games will have a hard time figuring it out because their brain has turned to mush. The other person will look at it because they're using their imagination, they're knowing other things, they've filled their minds with the right kind of things, they'll look at it and they can figure it out. Even if it's something neither one of them has seen before. Let's say it's a puzzle or something very simple or how to untie a certain type of knot. And I tell you what's bad is that if you don't, in a lot of people today, if they don't have instructions given to them on their phone how to do something, they can't do it. Okay, how many people out there use GPS? I do. I use GPS all the time. And we just moved to a new area. And I was using that GPS constantly. Even though I knew my way home, I just wanted to use the GPS. And I thought, this is stupid. I'm allowing that GPS to govern everything I do. So I started turning it off just recently, because I realized I'm just turning that on for everything. I'm not thinking on my own. I'm allowing the GPS to think for me. Now, if it's someplace new, I use GPS. But believe it or not, we used to have something called maps, real maps. You didn't look them up on your phone. You had to get it out, open it up, look at it, read it, and figure out where you're gonna turn, you had to pay attention to the road signs and everything. <laughs> and it was great to have a map. We were happy when we had a map. And now they have GPS and it does everything. Trust me, I know. I use GPS. But what I'm trying to get to here is that we can make our minds total mush and we quit thinking. And that's what's happening in America today. It's probably happening in other parts of the world too, but really here. Now, when I talk to you about the video games, I'm talking to you about movies and things too. Parents, I'm, I'm going to be real blunt here. I saw things from the, the biggest maker of children's movies and things like that. I started noticing the more I got immersed in things with the Lord, how corrupt those movies are, how much dirty stuff is in the movies. I'm not even talking about subliminal message things. I'm talking about the corruption that's in it. There's so much in it. And our children, if you let them watch these TV programs from these national channels, even the Cartoon Network, wow. Cartoons have gotten dirty. I had no idea they did that. And, and there's just a lot of things that are going on out there. Parents, we're turning our children into mush. We're getting them to laugh at things they shouldn't laugh at. When they're watching cartoons that are showing nothing but extreme liberal views, and that's what they do, and they're promoting homosexuality, they're promoting LGBT and whatever else, other initials you want to add to it, when they start promoting that, they start promoting all kinds of things. They have people on there that are like that. All these shows, if you notice all the shows on TV, the, the, these new shows, everybody has to have somebody that's gay on it. It's like, oh, you can't have, then one or two people have to be gay on it. It's, it's always that way. And it's becoming that way even more and more. But see, in reality, there isn't that many gay people versus straight people in the United States or in the world. There's some here, yeah, don't get me wrong. But there's not that many, but they're bringing that up constantly to slap it in our face. That's what they're doing. And when you start getting into video games now, because that's where I want to get you into. I want to take you into the video game business, video game industry. Their job in the video game industry is to lock your children's minds into their game. They want to make it so your children can't focus. They got to watch that game. Because if you become addicted to that game, they can add more and more things to that game. And then the game becomes popular and they're making millions and billions of dollars off of you. And those professional gamers, they're making million, they're millionaires. These professional gamers, they're making money. People pay to go see them play the game. That's a fact. Think about this, folks. This is what's happening. It's not like a simple little innocent sports game where you go out and you play ball or do whatever or hockey, or, or whatever you want to do. This has gotten so far. These video games have corrupted the minds. I saw Satan preparing demonic influences, demons, to be put into this game 
and put into different games that are going to be created. It's back in 1978 before they even had these kind of games. They were talking and plotting and planning because they were going to do this because once they did this, now they got you. Because it's innocent, right? <laughs> Everybody's going, oh, but it's innocent. It's okay. See, you start your children out on these innocent games and they need more and more and more. It's like a fix. It's like mind crack, all right? It's like brain crack. Oh, I need more. I need more. Oh, I need more. Not enough action in this one. I need more. I need more action. I need more action. And so that's what's happening. People are getting addicted to this stuff and it's not a joke, folks. It's not a joke. And then they see people killing each other and they get into those games as they get a little older. And then you have the school violence and then you have what happened at the gaming thing down here in Jacksonville. Yeah, it was a football gaming thing, but the addiction was so heavy. The demonic influences in that so heavy. This young man was so addicted to it that because he lost, he took people out. Say what you want to say. Say, oh, he's mentally unstable. Yeah, he's mentally unstable because he's been in the gaming industry forever. He's been in it since he's been a child and has corrupted his mind. Look at what happened down in Florida recently with the shootings, school shootings. The kid was into the gaming industry. Yeah, mental problems happen when you're in these games. These games corrupt your mind. They mess up your mind. And it's all a plan that Satan has set up. The devil has this set up so that when you go to do something, your mind becomes corrupted. You become corrupted. These things happen to you and it messes you up. Don't you understand? That's a demonic influence. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers of the air. Think about that. We're not wrestling it against somebody. We're not, it's not the game. It's the demonic influence in the game. It's not the people that build it. It's the demonic influence in the people that build it. What I'm getting to is that these games have a demonic influence. The movies you're watching have a demonic influence. I hear Christians tell me, and they go and watch these really bad R-rated movies. That, you know, oh, I like it because they scare me. I like to be scared every now and then. You want to be scared? Let me talk to you about hell. That'll scare you. That'll scare you worse than any of those movies because hell is real. That junk is make-believe. The demons are trying to get in there to set this and establish it. You want to find out what it's like to be scared? Let me just take you on a trip to hell once. You'll find out what it's like to be scared because you'll never forget that. Never will you forget that. That's etched in your mind. Those stupid, scary movies are some of the most horrible things we ever introduced in the U.S. And they've taken it further and further and further. Now they have sex and corruption and everything all involved in the same movies. But then they pass it off as PG-13. Oh, parental guidance. Let me tell you what. You need godly guidance, not parental guidance. Godly violence, vi godly advice. God does not want you to go to those things. God does not want you involved in these video games. I don't care what it is. If you're addicted to it and you're playing it, it's not from God. All right? Tell me how playing Candy Crush glorifies God. Tell me how playing the football game glorifies God. Tell me how playing the games where they shoot each other. I don't even know the names of the games anymore. They change them all. Tell me how playing World, World of Warcraft. Tell me how that glorifies God. Just tell me. And somebody said, oh, well, uh, Ivan, tell me, how, tell me how eating glorifies God. It does. God made us so that we could eat. So that glorifies God. We're doing that. And so they try to throw it back on me. I'm like, yeah, bring it on. God does not want us to fool with things of Satan, and that's it. What did Jesus say? Satan, get behind me, right? Get behind me, Satan. James 4, 7. Submit yourselves then to God, period. You're submitting yourself to God. You say, God, I want you... I want to cleanse my body. I want to cleanse my soul. I want to cleanse my spirit. I want to do the right thing. And so you do that with God and you submit everything to God and you give it to him and you say, here you go, God. And once you do that, when you give your life to the Lord, that's what you're doing. 
You give your life to God, you say, here I am, God. Forgive me my sins. I'm sorry. I, I've done it wrong. I accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior. I, I believe Jesus died on the cross to forgive me my sins. I make him Lord of my life. And you do that, but then you go right back in to messing with things that are from demons. I don't care who you are. I don't care what excuse you want to give me. I know better. I've been there. I've been in hell and I've been in heaven and I see what happens. I know what happens and this is not from God. People, none of those games are from God. Not like that. There, there could be a nice game teaching you something from about God. That's okay. Just don't get addicted to anything. But the main thing is, parents, pull the plug. I, if I can plead with you, beg you, or do whatever, I'm telling you right now, pull the plug. Just get rid of the games. You're going to have a big fuss. You're going to have a horrible fight at home when you do it. I know you are. It's going to be a horrible thing. Your kids are going to get mad at you. They're going to tell you how horrible you are and everybody else does it and everything. Get rid of the games because once you get rid of that game, you're saving your child's life. What's wrong with your child being a little embarrassed not knowing something about a game that's going on anymore when you're saving them from an eternity of living in hell? What's more important, making them look good now or giving them an eternal life in heaven instead of a hell? Because right now, if they're involved in those things, they're not going to heaven. They can't because their mind is too corrupt with that stuff. It's a demonic influence, and it'll draw them further and further away. There's, that's why there's no communication with your children like it used to be. We used to sit down at dinner time and talk and discuss things. And my family was dysfunctional, but not as dysfunctional as today. You go in somebody's house today, and you go to sit down and eat, and there's like, oh, what do you want? Okay, I'll fix you up something. And everybody comes in, they fix their own stuff, they sit down wherever, there's no communication. If they do go out to eat together, everybody's on their cell phone. Playing games, doing this, doing that. Parents, get established communication with your child today. Establish communication with them. Adults, establish communication with other people. Quit playing the games. You're addicted to them. If you don't think you're addicted to them, I tell you what, Leave them alone for one month. Try it. Try one month, adults. Just leave the games alone. Just one month. Walk away from them. If you can't walk away from them for one month, you're addicted. Huh. Think about that. See what you can do. And after you've been away from them for one month, you're not going to want to go back to them. Believe me. I had to bring these things up because I saw this in 1978. I wrote about it in my book called Entrapment. It's there in the book. You can get the book, of course. I told you that before. Just go to our website and at www.realheavenencounters.org. Just go there. Look at the stuff. You can look at all of our videos and everything. It's important that you keep up to date with things from God. You see, they didn't have video games when Jesus was around. They didn't have video games, you know, 40 years ago. We didn't have those things growing up. You have them now. Now you can see the demonic presence in them. If you don't see the demonic presence in them, keep praying. Keep praying, keep praying, keep praying. Because God is going to show you the demonic presence. It's there. All right, folks, listen. Do me a favor. Help support our ministry. We really need your support. We really do. Any way that you can do it. You can, you, you can support us by going to our website and clicking on donate and, and helping us out there. We have a give button there or something. And you can do that, or you can send you know check or money order to P.O. Box uh, 642. Yeah, it's P.O. Box 642. That's Marysville, Washington, 98270. We'd love to uh, hear from you also. You can send us letters to that same P.O. Box. I think it's written up here too. And we'd be glad to talk to you. Anyways, God bless. Have a wonderful day. And, God bless America.